Hi, my name is Bill Kinney. This is video number eight in a series about complex arithmetic methods and geometric interpretations. Part eight of that subseries of a larger series on complex analysis with a focus on using Mathematica and generally speaking I'm following the third edition of the Fundamentals of Complex Analysis by E.B. Saf and A.D. Snyder. In the last video we finally got to complex multiplication and its interpretation. We saw that you multiply complex numbers by essentially pretending you're multiplying two binomials and then using the fact that anytime you see an i squared you can replace it with a negative one and simplifying. Here's the general formula for how to multiply two complex numbers a plus bi and c plus di. We visualized it on Mathematica using locator and this code right here and I made the claim that the um, the modulus of the product, the length of this vector, the distance between the, this red dot and the origin, is the product of the moduli of these two individual numbers to start with. Let's verify that here. I want to show you that Mathematica can be used to find the modulus of the complex numbers. AB, ABS stands for absolute value on Mathematica. Uh, it can be used to find the modulus of a complex number in the way that I'm showing you right now. So the modulus of 2 plus 3i, maybe take a moment to do it by hand. If you are back, we could think about it also together here. It would be the square root of the sum of the squares of the real parts and the imaginary parts. The square root of 4 plus the square root of plus 9 would be the square root of 13. That will be the modulus of this one. For the other one, Think about it, you're going to get the square root of 1 plus 16 is the square root of 17. And for their product, what should you get? Well, you should get, if what I claimed was correct, the square root of 13 times 17. You do that in your head or by hand, 17 times 10 would be 170. Another 3 times 17 would be another 51 on top of that. 170 plus 51 is 221. This should be the square root of 221. And you could also check that as the square root of 196 plus 25 is indeed the square root of 221. We have verified that when you multiply the moduli of the numbers you are multiplying, you get the modulus of the product. Said another way, the modulus of the product is the product of the moduli of the individual factors. And if that went by too fast, maybe you want to rewind and uh, hear it again. <clears throat> what about the angles? Again, those are called the arguments of the complex numbers. I said that to find the argument of the product, you add the arguments of the individual factors. In order to figure that out, to confirm that here, we would need to use some trigonometry. Let me add some things to this picture to help us see things better. I'm going to add some lines instead of arrows this time. Let's make them red lines. For example, I'm going to want a line going from the origin out to the first coordinate of the first complex number and hopefully not make a mistake there I made a mistake let's see if I can figure out the mistake here closing things off all right let's see oh yeah I need a point here that's why this needs to be a point I do make mistakes here and I found my mistake, this needs to be a point. There we go, there you see that line segment. Let me make it thicker. If I add thick in here, it should make it thicker. Yep, now it's thicker. I'm gonna draw a triangle in here to help me use some trigonometry. We also wanna continue the line up to A itself. There we go, continued up there. I'm going to make a triangle right here as well. Let's see. Copy and paste. Start.
start at the origin, go up to 0 comma b2, and then head over to b. There we go, I've made a triangle right there. And let's make a triangle for this one as well. So I'm going to go from 0, 0 out to, well, i got to be a little careful. The first coordinate, the real part of that, that one over there, is what I've highlighted here. The second coordinate of the point, initial point is 0. And then the I'm gonna I want to end at that point, which again is given by all of this. Oh, some mistake somewhere in closing things off. I saw that. I think this will do it. Yep, there we go. Oh, the other one went away. Let's see here. I'm not sure what happened to the other one. But I think this should put it back. There we go. Okay. So we've got three triangles here. We can use trigonometry to try to measure the angles. In particular, Sokotoa, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. Focus first on this triangle. Uh, focus on this angle here. Think about the tangent. The opposite side um, is what? It's it's three, and the adjacent side is two. So that first angle there, I'll call it alpha, is if you think about it, the arctangent of three halves. In this angle here, in this triangle here, what is this angle here? It's going to be the arctangent of 1 over 4. But I'm adding 90 degrees to it as well to get the angle from the positive real axis to this second blue arrow. I'll call that overall angle beta. It's going to be the arctangent of 1 fourth plus pi over 2. You can type pi into Mathematica with a capital P-I, or you can use escape, P-escape, and get the symbol pi. So alpha is going to be this angle right here, from the positive real axis to the first blue arrow, going counterclockwise there. Beta is going to be the angle from the positive real axis to the second blue arrow, going counterclockwise. Let's make gamma be the angle for the last one. I guess I'll think of that as pi minus this angle, 180 degrees minus this angle. Pi minus the arctangent of what angle here? This, well, what was the answer? The answer was negative 14 plus 5i. This length is 5, this length is 14. Opposite over adjacent is 5 over 14. Okay. Spit back the last one there. Are these things equal? That's, let's see what they are in terms of degrees. If I multiply alpha by 180 over pi, it's about 56.3 degrees. Adding this capital N approximates it. Beta times 180 over pi is about 104 degrees, and gamma times 180 over pi should be the sum of these two. Think about that. That is going to be about 160 degrees. Not, not, let's see, a little bit more. 160.3, what would it be? 3. Okay, I better just do it instead of trying to do it in my head. 160.346, there we go. That is the sum of alpha and beta. So we have confirmed that the argument of the sum of the product is the sum of the arguments of the factors. Confirm that fact 
uh, we'll confirm it in other ways in the next video.